Okay, in this example, we'll conduct a paired samples t-test comparing a condition where participants consume caffeine to a condition where participants um, consume decaf. And we'll imagine that these numbers represent the number of words recalled on a word recall task. Um, this is a within subjects manipulation, so, so each pair of observations comes from one participant. So that'll be participant one, two, three, and so on. So there'll be nine participants. And the first step is we can write down the formula for T observed in a paired T test, which is simply the average difference between the two conditions divided by the standard error of the difference between the two conditions. So we can start off by calculating the difference scores in order to get the average difference. Different scores we'll get by simply subtracting the decaf condition from the caffeinated condition. So that'll be 1, that'll be 4, and so on. Negative 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 2, 2. So we can get the sum of the um, differences, which would be ten, so the sum of the different scores is ten, and if we divide ten by the number of scores, so that's the sum of D divided by the number of scores, which are nine, we get is our average difference 1.111. So we have our numerator, which is 1.111, which tells us these two conditions have a difference, a raw difference between the means of 1.111. If we were to calculate the mean for the first column um, for the for the decaf uh, condition and, and the caffeinated condition. Um, we would get a mean for the caffeinated condition of 6.1111. So we could just call that our mean for condition 1. And our mean for condition 2 would be 7.22, which if we were to subtract the caffeinated the caffeine condition from, from the decaf condition, we would get 1.11. So that's another way to get um, the average difference. Now, in order to get the standard error of the difference, I'm going to do it the long way by first calculating um, the sum of the squared deviation scores from their mean. So to do that, first we have to square each uh, deviation score. add them all up. So if we add all of the deviation scores together, we get 28. With the squared deviation scores, we get 28. So that will allow us to compute the sum of the squared deviation scores. The sum of the squared deviation scores will be the sum of the squared deviation scores subtract sum of the deviation scores squared over n. So that'll give us the sum of the squares for the deviation scores. Um, so we already have the left hand side of the equation which is 28 and the right hand side we have to take sum of d and square it so that's 10 squared over n which is 9. So sum of squares will be 28 minus 11.111, which will give us 
Now to get the variance of the deviation scores, we simply divide sum of squares by n minus 1, so we'll divide that by 8, so 16.889. divided by 8 gives us a variance of 2.111. It's a standard deviation from the variance. We simply take the square root. So the square root of 2.111 and standard deviation for the deviation scores is 1.4530. And finally, to get the standard error, how much um, error we would expect on average in terms of the deviation um, between these two conditions, we can divide the standard deviation by the square root of n. So we would take 1.4530 and divide it by the square root of n, which is here, 9. So 1.4530 divided by 3 will give us a standard error of the deviation of the different scores of 0 0.4843. which we can plug into the equation above. So we have the top of the equation, and we can now put in the denominator, which is 4843. And now we have our T observed, or our T ratio, which is 2.29. So that tells us that these two means are two point, a little more than two and a quarter standard errors apart. So we can look up either the p-value that corresponds to that t observed, or we can look up the t-critical value that corresponds to that t observed by entering in the degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom here will be n minus one, so degrees of freedom are eight. We'll do alpha 0.05 and two-tailed. If we're doing two-tailed, we need to get to 2.30. Um, this is one of those situations where we are incredibly close. We have 2.29. T-critical is 2.30. So if we were being really strict about it, we would fail to reject the null hypothesis here. Um, but we probably would say that with a larger sample, if all things kept going as they were going, this would indeed be a, a statistically significant um, effect. Another thing we could take a look at is the effect size. Now, one effect size measure is Cohen's D. And one way, not the only way, but one way to compute that in a paired uh, t-test design is to take D bar and divide it by the standard deviation of the different scores. And in this example, that is 1.11. The numerator remains the same. The denominator becomes the standard deviation, which we calculated as 1.4530. So our effect size measure for this example is 0 0.7647, 0 0.76. So a fairly large effect size. Uh, the reason it is not statistically significant is because the sample size is incredibly small. And we, were, if we were being really strict about it, we didn't quite meet our significance criterion.